CataractCoach.com Intrascleral IOL Haptic Fixation The Technique of Dr. Gabor Shariath And this is different than the Amani Method So our operating guest surgeon here is Dr. Femi Nafa from Tunisia And you can see this patient has a very dislocated lens nucleus Now it looks like it's relatively soft But now starting off with the three ports for the vitrectomy And also making some paracentesis incisions Now you could perhaps try to bring this nucleus up a little bit. So you can inject some BSS here, or you can try to touch and see if you can touch that nucleus. Can you bring it over? Maybe you could use capsular hooks, but just think how much Zion support is remaining if that's where the lens nucleus is. And the answer is very, very little. This is tripan blue dye going in. Be careful, don't want to stain the vitreous too much. It's going to be tough to stain just the lens. So now viscoelastic going inside and perhaps going to try and attempt at a rexus or at least start it so you can hook the capsule. So then there's the uh, cystome being used to start some sort of capsule opening. And then, oh, hooks going in. So these are iris hooks, which do work to bring that over, but probably a better option are the capsular hooks, which are longer with a smoother end. And we'll get out to the lens equator. So while an iris hook is okay, a capsular hook is a better option here. And let's see if we can bring that over. This may not work, because see, the capsular hooks would go to the equator, and you could tighten them up a little bit. But here on the iris hooks, it may just poke and damage the capsule more, cause a capsular rip. And that's going to make life difficult. So yeah, let's abandon those. I think in this case, you're probably better off, if you have the expertise, to do a pars planal lensectomy. So here we go, now using a 23 or 25 gauge cutter, probably 23 gauge cutter, to remove the entire lens, including the capsule bag. So just sacrifice the whole thing. Now you got to be careful here, make sure nothing falls back into the vitreous. And this is why you need to be adept at doing a full pars plane of vitrectomy. For me, I don't perform pars plane of vitrectomy. And so I would do this case in combination with a retina specialist and have the retina specialist do the full removal of the lens nucleus. So you can see there's the nucleus is mostly removed, a little bit left, try to clean that up, and yeah, you're just going to need to do a full pars plane of vitrectomy in this case. There you go. There's the full pars plane of vitrectomy. Very nicely done. Good to have that expertise, and important to make sure that you have a nice healthy retina and you didn't cause any breaks. So you can see there's a little bit of lens material that can be removed with the vitre uh, vitrector, and then... You can see, look, a PVD there and completing, completing the pars plane of vitrectomy. So now this technique, which we're going to show you, is creating an interscleral pocket, basically, or tunnel to put the haptics in. This was described by Gabor Sharia from Austria. And then I've tried this with Dr. Amar Agarwal's glued IOL technique. Now, glued IOL technique is fantastic. It's still creating these Sharia tunnels, but... It's using glue to help seal down the scleral flaps that you make. And it really also helps bind that haptic into position. Dr. Agarwal described this many years ago, and there are many patients who have many years of very strong support, even way down the line. So another advantage of doing the full pars plane of vitrectomy is, as you'll see, the IOL optic and the haptics end up moving a lot. And they get into the mid-vitreous. And if you didn't clean up all that vitreous ahead of time, you may end up causing vitreous traction, chronic CME, maybe even retinal break. So here he's making now another entrance. And that's going to be where the haptics are going to come out. And you can see they're 180 degrees apart from each other, which is very important. Now putting in some viscoelastic, try to have this viscoelastic mostly in the anterior chamber. You don't want this viscoelastic to go down into the vitreous cavity too much. So you can see planning out where these pockets are going to be made. And so here comes the IOL to be injected inside. And so the first haptic goes in. And now don't fully inject the lens. Wait. Now you can see he rotates the lens to bring the one haptic towards that area. And now the micro forceps can be placed inside the eye. Remember, leaving that one haptic outside the eye so the eye doesn't fall back. Now... You can use this technique of grabbing that haptic with the 25 gauge forceps and pulling it through that sclerotomy that was made. And pulling it through here, being careful to damage the haptic. And when you pull it through, there it is. 
Now you can see that it's there and pull it out a little bit. And now a tunnel is going to be created. And so here, he's not using a flap like you would for the, the agarwal glue to eyewall technique. He's just making a, a straight tunnel. And now the idea is to feed this haptic into that tunnel. And so feeding it into the empty 30 gauge um, needle and pushing it through. And now you've trapped that haptic into an intrascleral tunnel. So this is again the Shariath technique. So that haptic is gonna be nice and stable. So the difference between the glued eye well technique and this is the glued eye well technique creates a little flap there so you can really bury this haptic completely. So here you go. Time to do the other side. Now look how much work is required. This is the handshake technique described by Agarwal to bring that one haptic out. And there it is coming outside. And again, making that tunnel with the 30 gauge needle and now we're going to advance that haptic. Now be careful, some of these haptics, depending on the owl design, can fracture or break, and that's going to make life a lot more difficult for you. And just be careful, and certain eyewells may perform better than others. The CT Lucia from Zeiss often is a preferred lens, but any lens can work. And here's the post-op, a beautiful result. Thank you. Thanks for watching these videos. Be sure to check out the website too, cataractcoach.com. You'll get the full text, and the graphics and the photos plus the videos. And if you sign up for a free daily email, we'll send all of that to you in your inbox every day for free. Come on. CataractCoach.com, check it out.